Todd, what are you still doing up? It's almost midnight. You should be asleep by now. Can you read me a bedtime story for his grandma? All right, I suppose a short story. How about this one? Mom reads that to me all the time, and I'm bored of it. Well, there is one story that I know of that you might enjoy, but I don't know that you're old enough to hear it. Grandma, I'm ten years old now. I'm old enough. Please read it to me. Okay, but don't tell your mother. She wouldn't be too happy with me if she found out I was telling you these stories. I swear I won't say a word. Okay. Where should I start? I guess I'll start with the high mountains and the rolling hills of a distant land that existed not so long ago. Hidden away in the mountains was a small peaceful village filled mostly with farmers and merchants and some other kindly people who were just living their lives away from the rest of the world. But there were other people who were much more powerful who founded the village and on the day that they found it, they named it Ravensworth. Long before the farmers and other residents had settled in Ravensworth, a mysterious group of men were there first. But these were no ordinary men. Experts in martial arts and many deadly skills, they were known as the Laredo Clan, and together they inhabited and protected their village. Seeking to govern the village and eliminate the Laredo Clan, Alex Salvano created the organization that came to Ravensworth from a foreign land. As they established their government, they began to hunt down the Laredo Clan. Then the clan rebelled, and war was waged. Although the clan fought tirelessly, they were no match for Salvano and his agents and were massacred. Narrowly escaping death, siblings Aaron and Paul Laredo escaped the battlefield alive to go into hiding along with the only other survivor, Nolan Santosi, who was able to escape from the clutches of the organization. They are all that remains of the once great clan and now live in the shadows of Ravensworth, surviving, resisting, and waiting to carry out their justice. The organization is just going to use this food for their wealthy supporters, and our people aren't going to see a crumb on it. What do you think you're doing? It's a good thing you guys had me here. Like standard word agent. Pressure just killed him. That would have solved nothing. Murder for justice is foolish. Right. Well, they obviously weren't planning for us. They only had one guard posted here. Well, you can bet they'll start planning now. I'm sure Salvino will begin to notice his food missing. Or he won't, judging how starving our people are. Salvino won't notice how where this food is going. Hey, Nolan, what's that she's got there? I don't know. Can't be anything important she was carrying. Well, if it's something the organization doesn't want us to know about, you better what's going to do. Hey, I've seen one of those before. It's digital information. And it must be important if that's the only thing she's carrying. Yeah. Got anything I can read this? Yeah, I do back in town. Let's get back as soon as possible. You sure you can find out what's on this thing here? Uh, yeah, sure. As long as this still works, it should read the information that's on it. Oh my god. Sir, we had a bit of a problem with one of the food storage units on the west side of town. Well, that's not vague at all. How about you be a little more specific? Well, one of the men was attacked and almost all of the food is gone. That's three this year. I thought I told you to tighten up security there. For Christ's sake, there's only three of those fools. Well, we did tighten up security, but no one was supposed to be there that night. In fact, someone... Uh, higher up, told everybody to clear out. Jenkins. Actually, yes, it was Jenkins that was there. I know it was Jenkins. I sent him there to secure something. Did he say anything about that? Or did you screw up the debrief, too? Well, actually, Jenkins went on about something being stolen, like a briefcase. Get out! Tell no one in the village about this. 
we're the only people who know, and for now we should keep it that way. What? People need to know about this. It could ruin Salvino and the entire organization. We can't waste it. He's right, Paul. The information is more valuable if we keep it secret. If we're going to use this to get rid of the org, we can. Then we need to do it quietly and carefully. Screw the organization. Let's just tell them we have it and extort them for millions. We can move everyone out of this godforsaken village and build a new one without the organization. Or better yet, we just sell it for the highest bidder. No. They need to pay for what they've done to us, for what they're still doing to us. Our people starve in the streets, and you would have us deal to the devil for money? No. You're naive, Paul. There's more to gain here than just revenge. There's nothing to gain here. Only loss can come from this discovery. But it will be our loss. I need time to think about this. In the meantime, I want you to keep this safe with you at all times, Paul. And the two of you will tell no one of this. Identification? I don't have or need your identification. What I need is to see Alex Salvano right now. Salvano doesn't speak to every peasant that walks up off the street. Why don't you go back into whatever hole you crawled out of? Do you enjoy standing here all day, pretending to be someone important, hmm? Do you even know what it is you're guarding or who you're working for? No, I suppose not. They just give you a uniform and a weapon and a pat on the back when you do a good job. My dog has more purpose in life than you tools. You tell Alex Salvano that Nolan Santosi is here, and you're ready to pull his ass out of the fire. And here's your identification. Let's see if Alec remembers that. Mr. Santosi, what a pleasant surprise. I was beginning to think you forgot our little arrangement. But then again, it'd take a while to forget that. You screwed up, Salvano. Now I'm the only one who can protect you and your petty organization, which, judging from the very intelligent man at the front entrance, is chock full of political masterminds waiting to turn Ravensworth into a utopia. Why don't you cut this high and mighty crap out right now? You're not talking to Aaron Lurito. You're talking to me. You pledged allegiance to me three years ago after we wiped out your little Boy Scout club. Now, to what scoop are you referring to? You know damn well what I'm talking about. You lost something very incriminating to a man who isn't your biggest fan. I don't know how you were so careless, but it seems I'm your only shot at getting it back. If you know this, then why aren't you returning my property and the heads of those two Loritos right now? I'm holding the cards now, Alec. You don't get to see my hand until you ante up. I want my money today. Then you get your precious briefcase back. All right, Nolan. You'll get your money. Just give me the location of the Loritos, and it's yours. The brother, Paul. He has the memory drive. I'll lead him right to you. And when he's out of the picture, we can take care of Aaron. Paul, oh, glad I found you. Listen, I overheard two organization agents talking in the village today. They said there's going to be a huge shipment from the diet in a few hours. You want to go get it? Uh, did you tell Aaron? Uh, she's busy with her meditation and practice and stuff. Besides, you know she doesn't like it when it gets too violent. She might even be able to have a little fun with this one. All right, so I like the surprise anyway. Let's go. You don't think we missed it, do you? I haven't seen it. No, I'm sure they'll be along any second. Where is it, Paul? Hand over the information now, I'll make your death a quick one. I always knew you were rotten, Nolan. You're a disgrace to our people. What people, Paul? They're dead. All of them. How long do we plan on playing Robin Hood with your sister in this village? Huh? It was only a matter of time till the organization snuffed you and your sister out. And I wasn't about to join you. Now hand over the memory drive before I make you start regretting your birth. 
Aaron didn't trust you either. She knew from the beginning that you were no good. I don't have what you want, Nolan. Aaron never gave me the information for safekeeping. But you know what? Do what you want. You'll never see that memory card again. I hope that when I kill your sister, she puts up more of a fight than you. Aaron, we're about to eat dinner. Why don't you come join us? What's wrong, Aaron? And I'm gonna have to leave the village. Can you watch our people? I can. Is everything okay? No, I need to take care of something I've been putting off for way too long. Right here, what do you want? I know what you did, Nolan. My brother died in peace, and his soul will rest with our fallen brothers. But you, when you die, the grass will be greener and the sun will be warmer because our land will be free. You live in a dying age, Aaron. You hold on to this life of independence and prosperity, but you're too blind to see what slavery you truly live in. Salvano owns Ravensworth. The Laredo clan is dead. Now it's time for you to join them. The Laredo clan is alive and well, my friend. And when I am finished with you, I will force you and your puppet master, Salvano, to run for the hills. No, no, Aaron. You are the puppet master. You control the lives of all the men and women in your little hideout. In convincing them of the evil and destruction the organization will bring, you created pointless hardships for them. And what's worse, is your role in Puss death. If you hadn't involved him in your secrets and revenge plots, he would still be alive. And when Aaron found himself victorious, he went and found his brother's body and buried it with the rest of the Laredo clan. And when Aaron got back to the village, she wrote Alec a message telling him that if she ever saw another Warwick agent in Ravensworth again, she would expose him for who he was and ruin him. Oh, so the bad guy doesn't die? I wanted Aaron to fight him. Well, a wise woman once told me that gaining your enemy's understanding was a far better way to defeat them. Well, I guess it's time for me to go to sleep now. Thanks for the story, Grandma. Anytime, Todd.
And when Aaron found himself victorious, he found his brother's body and... I like this story, Grandma. <laughs> you live in a dying age, Aaron. You hold on to this life of independence and prosperity, but you're too blind to see what true slave... God, fucking damn it, cock it's sucking, right motherfucker. right there! <laughs> you're literally reading the script. It's right here! <laughs> no. <It's hard. laughs> Jenkins. That's it. <laughs> That's my only line. <laughs> I swear. It's just Jenkins. I don't know what the lines are. <laughs> you and your puppet master Salvin on my lips are really chapped to run for the hills. Good!